In this video we are going to dive into Deathwatch list building now that Warzone Nephilim with both its points and rule changes has shaken things up a little. First, we will start with a quick look at what has changed for Deathwatch in Warzone Nephilim and what it potentially means for building our army lists. In the second part, I will then go through my personal takeaways and how I ended up implementing them into my current Deathwatch list. Lastly, there will be a quick wrap up of what has been covered. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temer and I will be guiding you through this video. The release of chapter approved Warzone Nephilim towards the end of June marked a big moment in Warhammer 40k 9th edition with massive changes to command points, secondary objectives across all factions as well as the points rebalance. These changes are considered to be mandatory and will replace the values of previously released codexes and supplements. I have covered these points changes and the implications for Deathwatch in a separate video, the link is in the description. On top of that, there has also been the release of the third balance status slate, which has no direct impact on both Space Marines and Deathwatch. We already got Armor of Contempt in the previous one, and it remains untouched, but of course a rebalancing involving other factions indirectly affects who we are more likely to encounter in the new Warzone Nephilim meta game. To quickly sum up the key takeaways, we lost strong generic secondaries like Stranglehold and To The Last, but got better banners instead, and both generic Space Marine and Deathwatch secondaries have received mostly small boosts across the board, but none of them are on the level of auto-include. The CP changes on the other hand have hit us badly, in my opinion, both for stacking up strong relics and warlord traits, of which we have many, but also for our army of renowned lists making use of the pricey specialism extreme stratagem. Then lastly, in terms of points changes, the big gains here are the discounts to specialisms and free last fossils for the eliminators, though it is also worth mentioning that the Outriders went down by 5 points again and several vehicles such as Gladiators and Land Raiders also received further points reductions for those who are looking to include those into a regular death watch list. Speaking of lists, with all these changes in mind, here are my personal takeaways for Deathwatch list building as a whole. Up until Warzone Nephilim, our army of renown basically was the way to go. With very few exceptions, every successful competitive list used it, and while the army-wide access to chapter tactics has certainly been a great selling point, I think we also have to acknowledge that the majority of them were at least to some degree built around the unique stratagem specialism extremis. In a nutshell, what these lists had in common were high starting CP, around 8 or 9, which is a lot for Deathwatch, which allowed early turn alpha strikes with big 10 man kill teams such as the Indometer, sometimes even comboed with Brotherhood of Veterans on top. With Warzone Nephilim cutting starting CP in half, and removing trait and relic freebies, such tactics have now taken a heavy dent, and while I personally think that the army of renown is still viable, it might no longer be the one and only way to play competitive Deathwatch. As such, I believe that we now have three different list types to consider. First, the previously mentioned Kill Team Strike Force, Second, a potential return to Dreadnought spam. And third, coming up with a more balanced list that capitalizes on these new changes. As far as Dreadnought lists go, I personally think that they have aged badly for several reasons. First, Martial Legacy tax and points increases have basically put Relic Contenders back on the shelf, and while the Redemptors are still a decent pick even after the points hike from the first chapter approved, the question remains what should we replace the Relic Contenders with? Purely Dreadnought datasheets aside, such lists also made heavy use of traits and relics, and the new mission format and secondaries are better aimed at troops aka kill teams instead of walk-in coffins. All in all, not a great place to be, which leaves the third style of list a more balanced approach, which could be a mixture of kill teams and strong generic Space Marine datasheets. For instance, Assault Centurions have always worked decently in Deathwatch, they now also got the Armor of Contempt on top. 
We then also have the Eliminator Squad, Free Last for Sales and Armor of Contempt, or as I covered in a previous video, bringing along an Assassin or Inquisitor can be quite beneficial. We then also have the discounted vehicles such as the Gladiator tanks. For example, the Valiant is now fully kitted at 215 points and the Reaper at 195, which means the latter now costs as much as a fully kitted Redemptor Dreadnought. That's not too bad. The downside here, of course, is that if you wanted access to specific chapter tactics, White Scar's Advance and Charge, for instance, this would only be available through the pricey Brotherhood of Veteran Stratagem on a single kill team, and I think it would be a bit ironic to abandon the army of renown for CP reasons, to then end up having to rely on repeated 2 CP investments for a regular list to work decently. Either way, me personally, I have decided to stick with the Army of Renown for now, mostly because I prefer making slow list changes in the light of big game changes, and I also think that for the missions and reworked secondaries, I want to stick to plenty of troops, for which the kill teams are perfect. I also like where specialisms are now points wise, and even in a regular army list, I would most likely end up taking at least 2 or 3 anyway. For the secondaries themselves, my initial take is to try with banners and sticking to faction specific ones where I plan to at least double up, so these were important considerations for making changes to my list. Without further delay, let's have a look at the changes I have done to my list. Prior to Warzone Nephilim, I ran the Army of Renown with a cheap captain on bike, a Phobos Librarian and a Champak Chaplain, with the latter being the result of having to cut back on points and therefore dropping the pricey biker variant, even though I think that one is still excellent. Anyway, I had run my characters more as buffers rather than beat sticks, and this is something that I feel has gotten even more important now with Nephilim not allowing us to load as much on relics and traits anyway. For troops, I ran 5 kill teams, classic extremist indometer, a fortis with assault hellblasters, double proteus going costello 2.0 aka clangby, and then of course my beloved spectrus kill team, even though here I had to cut back to 4 eliminators for points reasons, which always irked me. With this setup, I just about managed to squeeze in the Apothecary too, but this one also had to stay firstborn, for points reasons. Out of these 5 kill teams, I rarely used combat squads on more than 2, which I felt was something that also needed to change. As a result, I wanted to move away from 10-man blobs and relaying too much on specialism extremis, the CP changes also forced me to rethink relics and warlord traits, it was pretty obvious to me that I really had to cut back on those, and as a consequence, I wanted my characters to stick to buffers, as I previously mentioned. On the bright side of things, my eliminators would get free last fusils, so it was clear to me that I had to include 5 of them again, and the discount to specialisms free 25 points anyway, which was almost the watchmaster over the captain, so I wanted to fit that one in as well. Now that the armor of contempt rule allows us to go without the dominus sieges anyway. In addition to that, with less warlord traits, I just wanted more buffing instead, such as the full chapter master rerolls he brings, or his unique stratagems. Therefore, my changes look as following. The captain on bike got replaced by the watchmaster, as previously mentioned. I keep nowhere to hide on him for now, as I'm playing a lot into space marines and also think sisters are going to be an issue, but on the other hand, I would like to add back Lord of Deceit, or just free the CP and start with one more. I will have to see about this and perhaps flip it around again in the near future, possibly the one part of the list I'm currently not happy with. For CP reasons, I also had to ditch the tomb, as I prioritized the beacon and chalice higher up on the list of relics. Having said that, the Phobos Librarian and the Chaplain Light remained the same. For troops, I left the overall kill team composition intact, one Indometer, one Fornis, two Proteus and one Spectrus. To me, the Spectrus with Eliminators remain auto include at this point more than ever, not much to say here, except that I would perhaps like Lord of Deceit back. 
Also, I think the fortress with assault hell blasters is really great now with all sorts of marines and sisters. To me, that one had to stay as well. For the Proteus, I left one clan be style, as I think this can work either as a full blob or also combat squad away the hammers. Solid composition cannot go wrong with one. The second one, however, I changed back to infantry bikes used in combat squads. Basically, there are three ways to run this. First and perhaps the most popular one is three veteran bikers mixed with two van vets. This is also the most mobile variant. The second is the more durable alternative with two terminators, because having T5 terminator tanks is fun. My third variant is more gimmick, replacing one terminator with a black shield and therefore not only getting a thunder hammer hitting on a 3 plus by default, but also getting access to the heroic intervention for the whole kill team strategy. I equipped both bikers and the terminator with power swords, giving them some extra punch in close combat alongside the black shield. Then lastly, the Indometer kill team, which I left at the old specialism extremist setup, though it remains to be seen how competitive this one turns out to be in the new meta. As I'm still running the Chief Apothecary, this is still a potent 10 man blob to bully the mid board with, even though I had to ditch the extra warlord trade on the sergeant. Overall, this is the only kill team not really aimed at combat squads, though it can still happen if required. Should I decide to drastically alter this composition, I might as well end up dropping the Chief Apothecary for good and perhaps replace him with a Judicier, which I think could come in handy again, and that one CP for selfless healer would then move to Oath Keeper instead. Overall, this list has a 4 CP pregame investment, leaving me at 2, which technically still allows for an extremist in round 1 regardless of going first or second, though it remains to be seen how much that will come up in practice. To me, this was the kind of compromise I was willing to make in terms of relics and traits, though I definitely feel myself being on the low end. Also, as I mentioned in my Warzone Nephilim review, I don't consider Adept of the Codex to be worth it with this kind of setup, as its gains will very likely not manifest before turn 3, at which point the whole late game CP gain of Nephilim is in full swing already anyway. On the bright side of things, I certainly expect to make good use of the Phobos and Army of Renown redeploy stratagems in case the Spectre skill team manages to hold out for that long. All in all, this is of course still at an early experimental stage, but I think it does capitalize on the major new changes well enough and I really like having both the Watchmaster as well as the option to split pretty much any kill team when required. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at both the impact of the chapter approved changes on the Death Watch, as well as the changes that I made to my own list. With Warsom Nephilim bringing big changes to secondaries, CP as well as points rebalance, I think it is a good moment to re-evaluate whether our army of renown remains the most competitive way to play. As alternatives, we have the perhaps by now outdated Dreadnought spam, as well as more balanced lists with access to both kill teams, as well as strong generic Space Marine data sheets. For me personally, the greatest concerns have been the secondaries and handling far less pre-game CP, but nonetheless, I have decided to stick to the Army of Renown for now, as I want both kill teams to play the missions, as well as army-wide access to the different chapter tactics, which I found to help a lot. Furthermore, while we used to think of specialisms as a bit of a tax, especially when we have to take up to 5 of them in the Army of Renown, I think they are at a very good place points wise now and even in regular lists, I think I would want to have at least 2 or even 3 of them to further boost the kill teams. For my personal list adjustments, I am running my 3 HQs as buffers only and I am excited to finally have found the points for the Watchmaster. While I am leaving the large majority of my kill teams as they were, I also focused more on being able to combat squad them and I of course took the opportunity to upgrade my eliminators with the free last fusils. In the near future, I could see myself putting Lord of Deceit back in, as I am expecting to miss out on that 
one. Though CP is so tight at this point, it's not even fun. Along those same lines, it remains to be seen how the classic Specialism Extremist Indometer KL team will perform in the new meta. I could as well see myself changing that for Flamers or even Eradicators, and perhaps the Judicier might end up being more useful than the Chief Apothecary, assuming that I keep wanting to combat squad the majority, if not all of my KL teams. I also think that anyone running Costello style kill teams or similar iterations can most likely hold on to them for the time being. Either way, while the CP changes irk me more than just a little, I am really liking the points changes so far, giving our army of renowned lists much needed room for additional war gear. So that's it for the most recent Wars of Nephilim changes and their impact on Deathwatch list building. How do these changes affect your own lists and what kind of new combos are you going to try yourself? And most importantly, how are you guys handling the CP changes so far? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated, as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.